I am currently on my honeymoon in the Maldives and I'm filming a video that I'm really excited about today. So basically, I'm going to be testing out two different underwater cameras for you. So I bought two different ones online before I came. Here they are. I bought the Kodak disposable film underwater camera. I got this from Amazon and I think it was around £25. It comes in a case, you can only use it once, but the pictures that I've seen on reviews look really promising, so I'm excited to try that. And then also I've got this film camera in an underwater case. Let me give you a better background here. A brand called Sunny Life. Again, this was about £25, but film wasn't included. So you have to take into consideration the price of film, which is quite expensive these days. But it's a point and shoot and you can reload it. I love the fact that you can reuse it. It's not kind of disposable like this one. But I'm gonna be testing both of them out while snorkeling in the beautiful Indian Ocean. I'll let you know how easy they are to use. And I will also insert some some pictures at the end that I've taken from each so you can kind of weigh them up and see what one you prefer for your next beach adventure holiday. We've been snorkeling once already and taking a couple of pictures so I'll try and get some shots of me using each of them and yeah let you know how easy they are to use. Look at my husband he's just started snorkeling too. <laughs> he's gone under the hammock. So fun. <laughs> from our honeymoon holiday and I have the pictures that I took on those two underwater cameras developed. So today I thought I'd give you a little review and run you through some of the pros and cons of each camera, tell you what one I think is best worth getting and also show you some pictures taken on each. So the first one was the Kodak underwater camera. The pros of this one was that it was super easy to use. It was literally all prepared and all ready to go. Everything's included in the cost apart from the printing cost of getting the film developed. But it was super easy to use. There was no kind of hesitation or worry on my part about whether water was going to get in because it seemed like such a sturdy piece of kit. I sadly don't have it with me anymore because I had to give it in as I had it developed but the price of it is quite expensive it was £18.80 on Amazon for that one camera so it had 27 pictures on it in total and I think I paid about £4.50 to get them developed and emailed to me digitally so I didn't pay for any extra prints. It seemed very sturdy and easy to use under the water. One thing that I did find was quite annoying was the strap. Obviously when you're underwater you don't want to let go of it so I used the strap around my wrist to make sure that it stayed with me. If I did let go then it did kind of float to the surface which is great. It was like floatable but the strap did kind of kept getting really tight and like in the water when you're swimming the cord would like Bin and it would get really tight and kind of pinch at certain points which I found a little bit frustrating because at those moments I was like oh my god is a fish like biting me but no it was just the strap around my wrist. The cons of it is definitely the price and the fact that it's one use, it's not great for the environment and you only get 27 pictures on there. The ISO is 800. I feel like that worked okay and um, all of the pictures did come out. A lot of them are quite blurry despite me trying my best to hold still when using it. There isn't great definition. Originally looking at them I was really happy with how they came out but then compared to the second camera I actually think the second camera is a bit better despite a big flaw. So let's move on to that now. I purchased the Sunny Life camera which is a reusable film camera. You can open it up and put your own film in there. I paid £25 for this. So more expensive than the other one because then on top of that you also have to buy film. Film these days is super expensive. I think I paid like £40 for about four or five rolls. So that's something definitely to keep in mind. However, you can reuse this camera. So the cost per wear is going to be a lot, lot lower. It comes with this underwater case, which I was also so happy about because it meant that I could use this 
like without the case or underwater with the case. For the first 15 pictures, it worked. However, I really, really struggled with the kind of use of this under the water. So basically it was underwater or with wet hands, it was really hard to turn this wheel. I don't know if it was something that I did wrong, like not loading it into the case properly. But yeah, I really, really struggled underwater to wind the film on. So it would take me a much longer to kind of prep for a shot. I'd have to come to the surface and kind of really work to twist it. Not as easy as it is sounding now. Actual picture button doesn't feel like you're doing that much. Like it's not a very satisfying click. So again, it's kind of hard to tell if you've taken the picture or not. And also holding it up underwater was quite difficult. So I ended up using this little thing quite a lot which I think roughly shows you without having to put it right up close to your face what you're going to take a picture of which I found very handy. The strap thing kind of happened with this as well like it definitely as I was swimming it would like twist and then get really tight and like stop blood flow and also it's not kind of stretchy material whereas the Kodak one was it was like a less elastic so it was very easy to put on and off quite quickly whereas this one is like rope and it's quite tight so when I was swapping this with my husband under the water again it was quite hard for us both to get it on and off which was a bit frustrating so my main problem came about 15 shots in when I just couldn't we were out on a very long snorkel and I just couldn't turn it it was like it got jammed so I opened it a tiny bit just to like make sure it was in the same place even though I was out of the water and like on dry it, water got in and it completely just stopped working after that which is such a shame because the last picture I took on this one of the last ones I took off was a shark coming towards me right and I was like oh my god I hope that picture comes out because that was not just like a black tipped reef shark that was an actual like gray shark and it was big and it was coming it was like swimming directly towards me and I snapped a picture of it and then this camera stopped working when I got back tried to roll it on it wasn't rolling I couldn't like reverse the film I was having a really difficult time with it and then also this little black thing fell out and then without that black thing in there it just didn't have the grip in there to work at all in or out of water and if I hadn't have found this little thing lying on the floor that would have been a really real big waste of money really because it would have made this kind of useless so in trying to roll this film on I opened this for like a millisecond whilst the film was still in there which meant that a lot of my pictures now taken on this camera have a light leak which I'm not mad about, it doesn't look bad, some of them actually have come out quite cool, especially the one with the shark, you can kind of see the shark in the distance, you might not be able to see him, I'll kind of draw an outline around him in the picture, but yeah, I do have a picture of the shark, however, I only got to use about 15 shots from this camera, the rest of them are completely dark and useless, which is such a shame. For the cost of the film, oh look, that thing's come out again, it keeps, it keeps just propping out it's just not made very well i think this is like a kid's toy camera first camera kind of vibe which you'd expect it to be a little bit more sturdy if kids are going to be throwing it around and dropping it everywhere the film that i used on that was a fuji film i'll put up a picture i think it was iso 400 but yeah i'm going to put up some pictures now taken on each of these you can have a look and let me know what you think came out better i personally think that the pictures taken on this sunny life camera i think the colors are nicer i think they're not as blurry they're a bit more in focus than the kodak but the picture quality probably has a lot to do with the film that i used but yeah i'd love to know what you think, what you think came out better, what one you'll be getting for your next underwater snorkeling holiday. I will definitely be trying them both out again. Like I will repurchase the underwater camera and I would definitely like to try another roll in this one, being sure not to get it wet. I should also say that I tried taking a couple of pictures of this, not in the water because obviously you can use this both in and out of water so those pictures came out quite nice there's a nice like vintage grainy film effect to them which you'd expect definitely nowhere near as high quality as my other like more sturdy film reusable cameras i hope you found this video helpful let me know what one you're getting for your next snorkeling holiday uh love you guys lots Mwah.